Chocolate is one of the rare foods that will both break with a sharp snap at room temperature and yet flow readily at body temperature. The cacao seed germ contains mostly fat and releases it when the seeds are ground during processing. Cocoa butter, the fat of the cacao seed, is responsible for both the flow and the snap of chocolate. Cocoa butter is comprised of fat triglycerides that contain mostly palmitic and stearic fatty acids. These saturated fats are solid at room temperature. During heating and cooling, these triglycerides can arrange and rearrange themselves into clusters of fat crystals. Proper crystal formation results in chocolate that contracts easily from molds, has a glossy shine, gives off a satisfying snap, and melts smoothly in the mouth. In order to achieve proper crystal formation, chocolate must go through a tempering process, which involves melting, rapidly cooling, and reheating the raw chocolate liqueur. First, the chocolate must be heated to 50 degrees Celsius to melt out all of the fat crystals. After heating, the chocolate is rapidly cooled to as low as 18 degrees. The goal is to create as many small fat crystals as possible, regardless of the stage. Once the chocolate is reheated to 32 degrees, the unstable crystals are melted out, leaving only the stable stage 5 and stage 6 crystal forms. In research and industry, rheometry and viscometry are used to determine the flow characteristics of chocolate. For molten chocolate, a rate ramp on a parallel plate rheometer is used to find the apparent viscosity of a sample at different shear rates. To fit the data, a Cassan curve is most common, though there is some debate as to the accuracy of this model. Whichever fit model is used, it is clear that chocolate is a non-Newtonian liquid with yield stress and shear thinning properties. The aspects of a sample that will influence this curve the most are the particle size of the cocoa solids and sugar, the percent cocoa butter, and the addition of emulsifiers, such as soy lecithin. According to the International Office of Cocoa, Chocolate, and Sugar Confectionery, the yield stress should be obtained at 5 radians per second, and the apparent viscosity at 40 radians per second, for the most reproducible and informative results. The rheometer is also used to see the impact of tempering on the apparent viscosity of the liqueur. In this kind of experiment, temperature manipulation is key, and the phase shift between stress and strain is measured at a constant oscillatory frequency. Liquids with more elastic character will show a stress response that is in phase with the strain, whereas those with more viscous character will show a stress that is out of phase with the applied strain. Apparent viscosity is at its lowest when elastic and viscous elements are both at their peak. To be sure that the solid particles in chocolate will not be perceived as gritty, particle size analyzers are employed. Most devices use laser diffraction, which passes solid particles in front of lasers and measures the scattering of light to determine the object's diameter. And there you have it, the quick and dirty guide to chocolate rheometry and texture analysis.